afraid, but your mountain's still there. You can't help but wonder, does God even care? Then you remember all He's done for you. Faith stands between the prayer and the answer. If we just hold on, He'll put it all together. Wait on that mountain. Wait on that mountain. was Mitchell John and his song entitled Wait on That Mountain to Move. Well, welcome to the Gospel Time program. I'm the host Dave Rigg. During this half hour, it's going to be my privilege to bring to you the gospel of Jesus Christ in song. Our next one is from the Promised Land Quartet. This is God's Word Will Stand. You're listening to Gospel Time. Down through the ages, many people have tried to stop the power of God's Word. They've tried to control it, even ignore it, anything so it could not be heard. But yet the Word has survived, yes, it's very alive, and it still has the upper hand. Before we came along, after we are all gone, God's Word will stand. With a book in my hand And stood the test of time It's weathered the storm While scoffers warn That means of every kind The eternal survival A 
of that old black Bible. It's true, true. We'll never end. So whatever may come, when it's all said and done, God's word will stand. From the beginning till now, it's not lost its power. It's still God's inerrant word. From cover to cover, it's still the bestseller of any book in the world. Written down in those pages are the answers for nations and the truth to guide their path. Whatever they decide, they will surely realize that God's word will stand. In the book of Micah, chapter 6, verse 8, God's word says, He has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Would you pause just a moment with me for a word of prayer? Our Heavenly Father, our prayer today is that you would please work with us to make us what you would want us to be. And Lord, as you fashion us, please bless us as we seek to be a person of justice, mercy, and humility. This we pray in the name of Jesus, and amen.
There's no other power like the Savior divine. to Genesis with Dr. John Morris, president of the Institute for Creation Research. Dr. Morris, you say that God created things with an appearance of age. Isn't that deceptive? No, Chris. How could God create anything without an apparent history? To be specific, when God created fruit trees, they already had fruit on them. They had an appearance of an age. The same with every animal and also man. Adam was a full-grown man who looked like he was probably 20 years old or so. Was this deceptive? No, not at all. God had to create things that were fully functional. Functioning things appear to have a history. God specifically told us that he created things out of nothing and in a short period of time. But God didn't deceive us. He told us the truth so we would know. And he did that back in Genesis. To find out more about creation science, visit us on the web at www.icr.org. That's www.icr.org. Our next song is from Sharon K. King. It's called, When I Say Christian. We are taught the word as children And we use it so it seems It's easy just to say it With no thought to what it means There are those who like to shout it Proudly wave it like a flag Others claim it but don't mean it Or who'll say it just a brag But it's more than just a title or a name It's a person and a miracle I claim When I Unto submission When I say Christian There are those who are offended When we mention Him at all They watch us from the shadows For the moment when we fall Holding out our imperfections We're no different, we're no better Than the way they claim to be They expect to see a difference on my face But the difference is my Savior and His grace When I 
For I know that as you pray for me and as the Spirit of Jesus Christ helps me, this will all turn out for my deliverance. For I live in eager expectation and hope that I will never do anything that causes me shame, but that I will always be bold for Christ, as I have been in the past, and that my life will always honor Christ whether I live or I die. For to me, living is for Christ, and dying is even better. Yet if I live, that means fruitful service for Christ. I really don't know which is better. I'm torn between two desires. Sometimes I want to live, and sometimes I long to go and be with Christ. That would be far better for me, but it is better for you that I live. I am convinced of this, so I will continue with you so that you will grow and experience the joy of your faith. Philippians chapter 1, verses 19 through 25 from the Holy Bible, New Living Translation for those who thirst. This is Gospel Time, a radio ministry. We depend upon your prayers and financial support to keep us on the air in your area and on your favorite radio station. If you'd like to help us, write to us at Gospel Time, Box 68, Bone Gap, Illinois, 62815. Write us today. Now on Gospel Time, it's hymn time. Like a river Attended my way When sorrows Like sea billows roll Whatever my lot Thou hast taught me to say it is well, it is well with my son. Though Satan should buffet, though trial should come, let this This glorious thought My sin not in part But the whole Is nailed to the cross And I bear it no more Praise the Lord
Kitty, 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 come on, come on over here, kitty, come on. Tom, <laughs> what are you doing? I thought you hated that cat. I do hate that cat, but I'm trying to experiment here. Okay. Hey, come here, you good-for-nothing cat, come on now. <laughs> See, my theory is it doesn't matter what you say to your pet, as long as you sound nice and friendly while you're doing it, okay? It's a, you're such an ugly cat, come on over here <laughs> oh, now. You come are on. so mean, but it won't work. Sure you know, will. she won't let you near her, no matter how <laughs> sweet your tone of voice is. It's not what you say, but how you say it, right? Well, not exactly. That's fine when you're talking to your pet. But what you say to people is just as important as how you say it. Colossians chapter 4 says your word should contain grace. That means being sensitive. What do you communicate when you speak? Pattern your communication after Colossians chapter 4. Something to think about from today's Our Daily Bread. Okay. Our next song is from the Dills, and this is the sound of his voice. He spoke the world into existence. His voice turned the darkness to light. His words prevail, and they never fail to show us his power and might. Roll apart at his bidding And mountains move as he demands He can whisper or shout But without a doubt The whole world is at his command And at the sound of his voice Angels assemble The sound of his voice Makes demons tremble Dark storms are raging The winds and the waves must obey And on a bright cloud of glory He'll step out someday And at the sound of His voice We'll be called away He tenderly spoke to Elijah With a still small voice in the cave At Lazarus' tomb He shattered the gloom When he called him out of the grave I was desperately seeking a refuge When I heard him calling my name Since I made the choice to follow that Dark storms are raging 
Well, that's all the time they're going to give us for today's Gospel Time program. A reminder that Gospel Time stays on the air in your area and on your favorite radio station because of your prayers and your financial support. If you'd like to help us, here is our mailing address. It's Gospel Time, Post Office Box 68, Bone Gap, that's B-O-N-E-G-A-P, Bone Gap, Illinois, and our zip code is 62815. Thanks for listening to our program today. Until our next radio broadcast, if the Lord's willing, this is Dave Rigg asking the Lord to richly bless you.